G'day Hammerheads, welcome back to the bench and I've just got the brand new Makita 12 amp hour 18 volt battery. So this one is the biggest one they make. It's 18 volts but it is the same size, almost identical to the 40 volt 5 amp hour. So it's very similar in size and the weight of that one is 1.3 bloody kilos, lordy. Uh, 1.3, so almost the identical size and weight to one of these big boys here. For contrast, here's a 4 amp hour 18 volt battery, 600 grams, so more than double, more than double the weight of that. And just for interest, about 50% more than an actual impact driver. <laughs> so this thing is bloody big and it has been a long, long time coming getting anything bigger than the 6 amp hour for the Makita LXT system. Anyway, let's crack her open. Plop. I wonder if you can buy blank ones of those little anti-tamper plugs. They probably keep them pretty tightly locked down. Okay, so very annoying uh, space inside the screw bosses here. That doesn't even fit. Well, I guess we're sticking with this one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Completely potted up board on the top and we got some more screws holding the actual battery cage in. There's a lot of pen marks on this. Just noticing the screws each have just some blue like Nikko pen on them and then the boards all around here. Hmm, I wonder what that's about. Wowee. Okay, so the cells. Oh, I cannot bloody see that. Okay, there you go. Okay, so the cells are NCR1865Ks from Panasonic. So let's see what they got. Huh. So I posted this to the Makita subreddit and the gang there uh, potentially found out what the deal is with the cells inside here. It seems the 1865K is a brand new model and they're so new that the spec sheet doesn't actually tell you uh, what kind of current rating these guys have. But this seller here claims that they are 20 amps each. So that would be great news because that would mean the total battery has a current capacity of 80 amps or about double what that has. So yeah, that's good news. 80 amps, so if they're 20 each, they come in groups of four. So there's one group, two, three, four, five, and this pack is a 5S 4P. So we've got four in parallel, four in parallel, four, four, four. And then the parallel groups, the four, the groups of four, they add up to give your discharge current of 80 amps, but also your 12 amp hours, because each cell is three amp hours each. So basically there are five groups of four strung together in series, and this big solder joint here, that's one end, which goes into the tool through that terminal, and then this is the other end up here. So basically the juice is going through here to, a, to the next set, next set, next set, next set, and then out to the tool through there. So if these do turn out to be 80 amps, that'd be awesome. A lot of people like that, but the problem with Makita is they've got to be careful with their current and their power coming out of these batteries because Makita makes all sorts of tools. Milwaukee will always be pushing the power because they only make professional grade tools. If they wanted to make a, a, a domestic grade tool, well, that's what Ryobi is for. The parent company, TTI, has a whole separate brand for domestic grade tools. So if they want to make lesser stuff, that's where that all goes. Same with Bosch Professional and Bosch Blue, but Makita have to be careful with this kind of stuff because they make the full gamut from kind of domestic grade all the way up to professional grade. So a good example is the whippersnippers here. So they make everything from these dinky ass little toy whippersnippers right the way up to these big professional ones that, you know, guys in Japan are mowing parks with. Now, I believe some of the tools have 40 amp fuses in them, so they should be protected. But at the same time, if you blow a fuse, that means you've got to take it in and get it warrantied and whatever. 
So that's one reason why Makita might have been wary to release really high output batteries is that these guys are compatible with just so many tools. Even the little dinky ones, they might blow them up or they might have mechanical problems from, you know, swinging this massive weight around. So for instance, if you look at the battery carriage up here, this part up here, what is actually held by the tool you can imagine that depending on the tool, you know, this one's pretty light duty, but depending on the tool, you're gonna need a much bigger battery carriage than the one that was designed for little batteries like this. You can see the XGT, the 40 volt, this is designed to be a bigger battery platform. And for instance, this carriage rail here, the part that actually hangs the battery on the tool is about 40 millimeters long versus, uh, I don't know if that first ramp actually hangs, but you go to there where it's the full thickness, 33, or this part here, the actual carriage part is 26. Also the center of gravity, so if you imagine that's clipped on right there, you want it to be as centered as possible uh, around the mass of this thing as it's jigging around and doing its thing on the tool. You don't want it to be too far in one end because otherwise that'll put a lot more leverage on it. All of that mechanical stuff, I'm sure that is a big part of why it took them so long to commit to this. That and the fact that it's simply too big for some of these bloody tools. So they've got a handy little list on there, whole bunch of saws and things that this does not physically fit into. And I'm sure there will be other exclusions where they're just like, look, this thing is just too big, don't do it. Uh, it'll break the battery carriage off your tool or maybe off the battery. And just because I am a bit of a design nerd, let's just take a look at some of these others. So flex, the length of that rail is roughly 60 millimeters. If we look at Milwaukee, that one's actually pretty small. That one's only uh, 40, 40 ish. So that's about the same as that's close to the XGT. Bosch is also pretty small, but again, this was designed from a, oh, that first, that first section is 46 and the whole thing is, oh yeah, almost 60. And then of course the mighty Hilti takes up this whole bloody length. So, you know, Hilti tends to over-engineer these things uh, because they have a 20 year warranty. And so 90, 90 ish millimeters. So, you know, uh, there's a lot of different dimensions to these things, but if you just look at the most basic one, you can kind of get an idea of what was designed from the start to have a bigger, beefier battery like these guys. And then what has started as a sort of smaller 18 volt battery, but with a bit of room to grow. So these guys, these two brands, Bosch and Milwaukee, they both have really hit the high output um, battery sort of concept pretty hard. Their electronics reflect that and also just their mechanical stuff reflects that, except just quietly, this bloody thing is so long, just using it on, a, on the regular Bulldog, uh, the Bosch Hammer, like I think I put two charges, two charges worth through this thing. That thing is already getting hammered. That's not gonna last too much long, but that's the Bulldog that doesn't have any vibration control or anything. So you imagine that thing flopping around, you know, you're gonna have longevity issues with this. And so that is, I am sure, why Makita took so bloody long for this. Not that it just doesn't fit in some tools because hey, eh, I mean, it's impolite, but you know, what are you gonna do? I'm sure it's because of this mechanical situation up here. They're gonna have a lot of warranties of these things breaking off either the battery or the tool. So anyway, there you go. My two cents. Uh, I don't really talk about batteries too much on this channel. I'm more mechanically minded myself, uh, but hey. Well, thanks for watching and I'll, oh, I'll do the thing. I'll do it and I'll scratch you later. Silliness, look at this fucking thing. Look at this bloody thing, silliness, it's wrong.